It's no secret that, from the point of view of the audience, Go is not a very spectacular game. You can never compete with games like hockey or basketball. You know, these black and white stones just dance on the board strategically. Just imagine that if you're watching a football game and the two teams were so skillful that they never scored a single goal during the match. I'm afraid that this will leave a lot of the people a little unsatisfied. But have you ever seen the games that were played in China some three or four hundred years ago? Those games were different. They were not so strategic and they were all about tactical complications, capturing races, running around, making shape and fighting, fighting and more fighting. And yet there was a player who would defeat them all and his name was Huang Longshi. Huang Longshi's style was very different. It's not that he would avoid fighting, but he would fight on his own terms. He would never start a fight just for the sake of starting it. And yet he would always try to make his shapes stronger and thicker and his opponent's shapes would be the only ones that would have weaknesses in them. The greatest Go player of the 20th century, Go Se Gen, once said that Huan Longshi was at least the strength of Honimbo Dosaku. And you should know that Honimbo Dosaku is considered as one of the strongest Go players who ever lived and one of the two Go Saints of Japan. Go Se Gen also added that if Huan Longshi was alive today, he would have at least 13 professional done. So what was it exactly that made him so strong? Let's find out. Huang Longshi was born in Jiangsu province in China in 1651. Or was it 1652? Or maybe 1654? We don't really know for sure because of the differences between the Chinese and the Western calendars at that time. He quickly became known as a child prodigy and people from other provinces would come to play a game with him. And when he was 18 years old and he was still developing his style and he was far from being the dragon that he would grow into later in his career, he played a match against one of the older time champions. Uh, his name was Shen Daiyo and he was 80 years old at the time. Everyone thought that Huang Longshi might have a chance, but no one really expected what was about to happen. Huang Longshi managed to pull off a staggering 7-0 win in this match. And I'm going to show you one of the games that they played. Let's take a look at the game, paying attention to the style of this brilliant young player. Now you're looking at the board and you're thinking that I have already played the first four moves of the game. But no, the rules were simply different back then. At that time in China, every game would start with this diagonal opening. And what's more important, white would play first. And it was actually Japan who was responsible for unifying the rules. They introduced that the game would start with an empty board and black would play first. And now, as you know, this is the common rule standard. But in the 17th century China, every game would begin like this. And in this game, Huang Longshi takes white. So Huang Longshi plays first and Shen Daiyo plays black. And there is no komi, remember? And this was a really common pincer. White immediately approaches and attacks the stone. Black approaches one more corner and white tenukis and plays on the top. Today, we could consider invading this corner probably. But at that time, invasions in the corner were really not common. The corners were really undervalued. So white goes for the outside and plays a jump. Black responds again with this large knight's move. And this was a really common way of enclosing the corner, which we don't really use much today. White does the same thing in this corner. Another jump onto the side, approach, and a corner enclosure. Of course, nobody invades the corners. White takes the side, attacking this corner, approach. White makes a base here, and black defends the corner. Now the corner becomes stronger, but not strong enough as we will see in the future. White jumps. Making this group stronger, white defends. Now black wants to help this stone, so black jumps. Another invasion, trying to attack this corner, and a pincer. As you can see, the opening looks very different from what we're used to today. They wouldn't really invade the corners. 
and they would uh, enclose all the corners with this large Knights Move enclosure, and uh, they would invade everywhere, lots of jumping. All the Joseki looks different. But we're not watching these games for the opening. Now that the opening is complete, the most interesting part of the game is about to begin. Now that White has some stones around this corner, White plays an invasion to attack. And at this point, it doesn't matter how Black responds, White will be able to save this, this stone. White can save it like this. And if Black responds here, White can always connect. So in the game, White plays this honey first. Black responds. White connects. And this honey and connection was a really common sequence at that time. We were creating a weakness in Black's shape. Now, White moves out. Now White has to live. So White bumps. And connects. Black makes an extension, and now these two stones are feeling a little weak here. So White needs to find a way how to handle it. And we remember that if you want to make a light shape, if you want to make sabaki, then a good way of doing that is by attaching to our opponent's stones. And this is exactly what Juan Lushi played in the game. He attaches here. Black responds. And another attachment on top. Black takes the stone. Now Atari. Black takes, and one more Atari. And at this point, probably it is too submissive for Black to connect. This connection, on the other hand, is a lot more important because this connection here, it makes Black so much stronger, and it also makes this white group weaker and thinner. So White would probably need to respond, and if White doesn't, then Black will be able to cover this group like this and force White to live there. At the same time, Black becomes so much thicker on the outside. But in the game, Black connects here. Now White blocks. And these Black stones are also th separated, and they're also thin. So now, it's an equal fight. White and Black are both about the same strength here. It's probably still not too late to make this connection first. And then, when White makes shape here, jump. But in the game, Black jumps directly. And this gives White a chance to capture this stone later. First, White makes this exchange, threatening to cut off the stone. Black responds. Another Sente move. Now, Black only has one eye in the corner, and White gets some shape here. And finally now, White captures this stone, just in time to damage Black's shape. You see? Now there's a connection problem here, and you would really feel that Black would want this stone to be placed like this. If the stone is like this, then of course now Black would be fine. Black could just Atari and all the Black stones will be out. But the stone is here, which means that now White has a cut, and Black needs to fix the shape yet again, spending one extra move here. Now White jumps out, and Black tries to damage White's shape. Honey. And now, this move here, thinking that this is Sente against the corner. In the game, White responds to this, but actually AI at this point thinks that this is the key point for both Black and White. So now if it's White's turn, White should play here. And when it's Black's turn, then Black should also cover this group and get a strength outside. But in the game, White jumps, and instead of capping the group like this, Black connects. White connects. Both black and white try to get out in into the center. And white has a very good shape. Now white's shape looks so much better, and white is out into the center. But white still wants more efficiency. If, for example, white simply fixes a shape like this, then everything is fine, but at the same time, black could capture this stone, and the black stones will be settled. And Huang Longshi doesn't want to let this happen. So in the game, he extends like this, trying to attack black first. Black needs to connect. White makes a shape.
black necked. And white peeps here, making sure that black wouldn't have two eyes. Of course, now black gets this honey, and white shape looks like it's in trouble, but white connect here. At this point, black can't cut like this, because now black has two cutting points here and here. White would cut and black shape would collapse. So black needs to go back and connect here. But now white has time to cut and capture this stone. Atari. White escapes and white stones, all of this white stones are settled. And here black finds himself in a bit of a situation because black doesn't really want to connect here just like this. In this case, the black stones still only have one eye and white could continue to attack them by playing here or here and the black stones are separated and under attack. But instead of this simple connection, black has a very beautiful Tsuji that black played in the game. Would you like to try and find it yourself? If you watched the course by Alexander Dinerstein about attachments, then you've probably found this next move. Because in the game, Black played this brilliant wedge. Let's see how this sacrifice can help Black make a better connection. Black cuts. And at this point, if White simply accepts the sacrifice, if White captures here, this is perfect for Black. This is exactly what Black has been aiming for. Black will connect like this, and white can't cut. If white tries to cut like this, the shape is terrible. Now black will atari, white needs to connect, and black can live on the top easily. And white's shape would be really, really bad. So, this didn't happen. Instead of this, white played the best move according to AI as well. White plays out, trying to still separate black. Black escapes. Now white has to capture. Black plays this Atari first, which will help black make shape in the future. And finally black connects. So white still managed to separate these black groups, but black shape is still better. Now white moves out into the center with this diagonal move, and black decides to attack the bottom and invades here. At this point, the computer thinks that because the black shape is not settled yet, and still there's a cutting point here, and the, the whole group is not alive, black has this move here, which is Atari and uh, threatening to start a co, and threatening to capture this stone on the second line. If white defends here, try not to let black have two eyes, then black will be able to start this co in the future and separate these two white stones. But in the game, black invades here, now let's look at the status of all the groups on the board. White has a living group here on the top, another one here, it's alive. This group is strong because white captured the stone. Another settled group on the left, and it's not quite clear what's going to happen here. Black, on the other hand, has an unsettled group here on the right. It's not clear who's going to attack whom here. There's a gap here. White can clearly invade, and there's still some weaknesses here on the left. So. So many weaknesses in black shapes, and white makes an invasion here. Black responds. And at this point, white can easily live in this corner. For example, white can extend like this. Black would have to connect. And white would uh, play this. And then jump into the corner. And white is alive. Black loses all of the corner territory, but at the same time, now black becomes stronger on the outside and black could take the initiative and start attacking white. And this is not what Hualanshi really wanted to have. So instead of all this, instead of jumping into the corner and living there, white decided to make his own position stronger first. White attaches here, and takes the corner. Atari, white connects. Now black has two weaknesses, so black fixes one of them, White jumps. This territory becomes even stronger. Now, black defends. And white adds another stone here and captures this stone. Now the preparation is complete. White has no more weaknesses in this game. But black still has a lot of Anji. Black played a skillful probing invasion into white's corner. But unfortunately, 
nothing can really help black to fix all of those weaknesses at the same time. The weakness here, the weakness of this group, and defend the corner. So white wasn't greedy. White is not trying to cut it off like this and give black a chance to live here. White just responds like this and allows black to connect if black wants to. But of course, if black connects right now, white will take the corner and white would be very much ahead on points. So black tries to actively defend this corner. Wedge first to create some weaknesses in white's shape. Connect. And white connects. And we get the same shape on both sides. Now, there is still Aji in the corner. So before fixing it, Black makes this exchange, and White calmly responds. And one more endgame move, defending again, and trying to reduce White's territory. And one more. Black connects, and White connects. And it seems that White had to respond to everything, and Black successfully defended the corner. And yet, Black has to go back and fix the RG. In the game, Black made this bamboo joint. Why is that? Couldn't Black simply uh, maybe take the corner like this? Black could, of course, but in this case, the RG in this corner is really serious. White has a lot of variations you can try inside, but let me just show you one of them. One of the variations that uh, a computer suggests is that White could jump like this. Black could uh, cut. Black can't let white live here. Then uh, black pokes at the shape. White connects. Black needs to cut. But now this is sente. And uh, this is also sente because uh, there's a cut. Black and Atari, of course. But after this, Black still needs to go back and connect here. And White gets to cut here, make a beautiful thickness into, in the center, and this is still Sente. Black needs to connect. And this result would be unbearable for Black. Black still gets this small corner, but White gets so strong on the outside that White simply can't lose the game after this. So in the game, Black had to fix the shape once again, and now the corner finally belongs to black. But now white can simply switch to attacking the next group. There's a weakness here. And this is a standard invasion. In the actual game, black had to peacefully respond with this. But uh, the shape is quite standard. And do you know what would have happened if black played like this, trying to cut off this white stone? Where would you play as white now? The shape move in this situation is for white to play this Kosumi. Because after this, the whole black shape just falls apart. It doesn't matter where black plays. Now, if black tr tries to connect like this, then white plays here, and black gets separated. Black can probably still connect by playing something like this, but of course, white with Atari connect, and black doesn't have any eyes. If uh, black plays uh, here, then white can cut or white can extend, white can do anything. So this is impossible. And uh, in the game, black plays here, which allows white to connect. And the entire black group is still very much in danger. Both players make shape. White gets some territory on the left. A forcing move, white connects. Black jumps out to make some shape, and do you see how this hurts the group in the center? Naturally, white splits, and now this cut really becomes a problem in the future. If white manages to cut here, and those stones will be cut off, then black could simply die up there. And just like we said before, AI thinks that the most aggressive response for black here is to play this Atari. But in the game, Shendayo played this peaceful connection. Now this shape is fixed. But of course, now there's still a weakness here because black didn't respond to this move. White peeps. White is threatening to cut off these three black stones. But at the same time, black doesn't have time to worry about that because the entire black group is not alive here. 
Black needs to look for life. Black needs to make two eyes. So Black crawls into the corner. And White ignores that and cuts off the stones. And the problem is that this is Sente because White can later capture this stone. So Black fixes this. White exchanges like this. Black pushes. And this pushes white naturally into this simple connection. Now these three stones are captured. And black still needs to add some extra moves to live. Black makes this exchange first. And at this point, black would really like to ignore this, uh, this corner and, for example, play a big move somewhere here. Take this move, for example. This would be great, but unfortunately, black can't afford to play Tenuki. If uh, black plays here, then white could uh, honey, or even simply, white could extend like this, and all of the black stones are dead. Black can't make two eyes, and uh, you can check that by yourself. So in the game, black has to make this honey, which is unfortunately not sente against the white corner. White is all well connected. So white gets a chance to play here. So let's recap. Huanxi in this game had strong, impenetrable shapes everywhere in the board. At the same time, black, his opponent, had a weakness in this corner, uh, a problem with this shape here, and a problem with the group on the top. All of those shapes had aji, had trouble, had weaknesses in them, and white could make use of those weaknesses to attack them. And just by attacking those groups naturally, just by seemingly doing almost nothing, Huanxi now has a 20 point advantage, at least 20 points of advantage. The game continued for several more moves after this, but there is no way that black can catch up after being so much behind. But making strong shapes everywhere and attacking his opponents with them was not the only thing that Huanxi was capable of. And in the second lesson, I will show you some more magical tricks that you could do. By the way, you can also watch these lessons on our platform, gomagic.org, except there, You'll watch them with interactive quizzes right within the lessons and practical exercises right after them. And if you enjoy watching these Go videos and you don't want to miss others like this one, go smash that like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and this is Go Magic.